Hi and welcome to the Lisa Loves Stitch and Floss Tube channel. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. Welcome to my channel and I'm sorry um, if you're a um, new subscriber and you were waiting for my next regular video and it didn't happen. <laughs> um, wow, uh, I think it's been quite a few weeks since I had my last video. Um, I've been, had my birthday, um, I've been um, sick and I'm all better now. I had a COVID test, but I didn't have COVID. Uh, I knew I wouldn't, but you know. And I've started a couple of new cross tube, no, cross tube, what am I, what am I saying? <laughs> a couple of new cross stitch projects. <laughs> I've finished a knitted item and I have a half finished object with knitting as well. Um, and I've started on a new knitting project. Um, so I've been quite busy. <laughs> um, I'm just going to stop this for a second because um, I want to go and show you what I got for my birthday. All right. So um, for my birthday, I got this. I knit this. But the yarn, this gorgeous yarn, which I will take off. This is the, I don't want to talk about this yet. Oh, I might as well talk about it now. Sorry if you're not a knitter, but you're going to hear it now. It won't take long. Um, but it's easier to do it now because it's quite warm and it's not winter here <laughs> in Australia. It's going into summer. So this gorgeous yarn, I got these lovely... Um, bright coloured mini skeins which are my creative garage hand dyed um, from the lovely Rebecca thank you um, she was kind enough to send me a surprise birthday gift um, of these mini skeins and I paired it with some Indochita um, Suri Alpaca blended with silk um, it's sort of like an equivalent to mohair if you don't like the itchiness of mohair. And it's gorgeously soft. It's so soft and warm, like really, really warm. Um, and I made, I wound it up straight away, couldn't wait. And I made it into the um, Snuggle Down Cowl by um, So Sweet Violet, Jules. Um, so if you haven't watched her Fostu, oh, uh, sorry knitting podcast well she does other crafts as well um then you should definitely check her out she's in the uk um so sweet violet as in so as in s-e-w and she makes beautiful little english paper piece quilts and her own clothes and um, lots of knitting projects and designs so yeah go and check her out but anyway so the snuggle down cows are really simple um quick way to use up um ends of yarn that you don't have anything for minis um, or even just parts of skeins that you want to use up and just hold it together with um, a mohair or Suri alpaca equivalent um, and yeah it was really quick to it took me about a week and a half and that was just doing it in my spare time uh, and it's so lovely and cozy and I just adore it so um i didn't follow the pattern exactly because i didn't read it properly you know but it doesn't matter it was just meant that it was supposed to have two these double ring of yarn over type things here and then it was going to have a single row and then double then single and double but i didn't do it like that but it doesn't matter it still looks like it and it's still cute <laughs> um see so yeah, it took me a week and a half uh and I really enjoyed knitting it up and I've cast on another one and um, it's a perfect project for if you want something that's quick to knit it's great for gift knitting and it's a nice cozy cowl that just snuggles snuggles against your neck under your chin but if you're wearing a coat you don't want that bulk coming down the front of your coat with a scarf or a shawl um, this just tucks in to your collar and it's nice and cozy so I imagine next winter this is going to be perfect for wearing on my daily walks with um, Sooty and our other dog Luna when we get her and it'll be perfect 
and hopefully I'll get to go to Tasmania one day in the near future again <laughs> where it's cold and I'll get to wear it there too. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice cowl. It sits beautifully. I haven't blocked it or anything. I don't think you really need to worry about blocking it. Um, and it just sits really nice. It's got the, um, cause you're doing just straight stocking it at the beginning without rib. It just does this nice rolled edge, which looks lovely. Um, and yeah, I love it. So thank you so much, Rebecca. That's the best birthday present. And you can see I appreciate it because I knitted up straight away <laughs> into something and um, I will get lots of love out of this. And it's just nice and cozy. I love it. <laughs> so that's that one. But as it's warm, I'm not going to leave it on today because <laughs> this um, paired with the Surrey Alpaca, super warm. And I can't even tell you how soft it is. It's like wearing a cloud around your neck. Um, so I also got a lovely card off Rebecca and some lovely teas, um, which I'm looking forward to having because they're Christmassy type ones. So I'm looking forward to um, brewing those um, during Vlogmas, um, which is not that long away, actually. Um, and then the other day in the mail, I got this gorgeous card off um, Daylene of So Grateful Floss Tube. Um, this is her stitching, I think. Her sampler, she does beautiful samplers and quilts and everything and she grows her own veggies and makes beautiful cookies and other baked goods and she's just an all-round talent and um, a good friend and she sent me this beautiful card and I won't show you the writing but she put this cute little butterfly in there for me so that was a really nice um, card so I really enjoyed getting that in the mail thank you Daylene thank you Rebecca and next up thank you Laura <laughs> Laura gave me a gorgeous gift she had some little photos of me and Sooty from my recent floss tube video she did a screenshot and she had them printed into little photos so I've got that one that sits on the edge of my computer I've got another one which I've added into my 2020 diary, my journal. I've started a journal just to capture 2020. It's a bit late, but better late than never. Um, and I just got this inexpensive um, notebook journal from Coles Supermarket. And then I just put in there the picture of Sooty and I could did up a page with some flowers. But yeah, it's really great. I open the book up and there's Sooty and me. So cute. <laughs> um, and then she gave me a bigger picture in a beautiful frame of Sooty and I. So that's lovely. So I've got that in our cupboard in, in our glass case in um, the living room where I can see it all the time. And she gave, I didn't get all of them down because they're up on a high shelf, but I got three little birdies. Aren't they cute? These little birdies. They're so sweet. So I've got them sitting next to the um, photo in the cupboard, in the glass case. So that's lovely. Thank you so much, Laura. And um, yeah, I had a great birthday. Um, nothing too exciting. Um, you know, when you get to my age, middle age, um, <laughs> it's not as exciting as when you were younger. And um, you're still not a year older. <laughs> but it is nice to lovely surprises from beautiful friends i uh, really appreciate that i got some nice goodies from my mum and my nan and from wayne's family so i had a really nice time we had a family dinner with wayne's mum and dad and um, my sister-in-law brother-in-law and nephew and um and wayne and it was just nice and even sooty came along <laughs> um so yeah so i had a good time and then after that it was halloween um, I didn't actually make it to Halloween this year in, in regard to decorating. I had some Halloween decorations up and then I just went, stuff it. It is 2020. I want Christmas. I want it now. So <laughs> I, on Halloween, we didn't have any kids. I could hear them down the road, but they didn't put a notice in our letterbox to say that they'd be coming to visit. So I didn't bother getting anything for Halloween this year. Maybe next year it'll be better. Um, but yeah, on Halloween Eve, on the evening of Halloween, I just um, got out the Christmas tree, put
put up the Chrissy decks and I've still got a few things to put out, but basically they're out. I just got a smaller tree this year and um, put that up on our buffet behind our lounge because of the dog. I don't want, she'll just want to destroy the tree if I put it down on her level. So that's it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And then now I thought, oh, Getting on into November, I better do a quick floss tube and show you what I've been working on so you don't think I've dropped off the planet and get ready for Vlogmas. So I haven't been able to do as much um, stitching as I'd like because the dog, I haven't got much time because that's going to go flat. Um, the dog wants to grab everything and chew and destroy things. So uh, I can't risk having my fabric dangling down or my floss and she just will destroy it. So some evenings I spend with the cat because she can't come out to the lounge room because of the dog. So I go in the bedroom and I sit with her on the bed and watch Floss Tube or YouTube or Netflix on my iPad. And I have my um, daylight lamp there and I do a bit of stitching. But sometimes I'm just so tired lately because Sooty's up at quarter to five, five o'clock in the morning and it's go 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 all day so and we're doing walks every day so i'm worn out <laughs> um so yeah i haven't done a lot but i did start two new projects so this is on nan 36 count nan tucket brew um which i got on from motifs by hand on etsy um, and this is the start of Halloween at Hollyberry Farm, which is a sal I'm doing for my birthday with um, Julia um, Stitcher Girl CA. Um, so if you want to join us, you can start any time. Um, so yeah, we started Halloween at Hollyberry Farm. So I'm not sure how much she's got up to yet. Um, probably more than I have. <laughs> but anyway, I've just started this bit. Um, it's quite easy because I don't have to look at the chart, so that's good in the evenings. I can just stitch away without looking too much. Um, so this is Stacy. I can't talk. <laughs> Stacy Nash Primitives um, Halloween at Hollyberry Farm, and so I've just started this little. You can hardly see it. Brown strip above where the lettering goes, um, and that's what I've started just in that corner. So I'm still waiting on some threads coming from 123 Stitch and also I couldn't get hold of some threads so I may have to substitute but we'll see how I go. So I've done that one and now of course I just let my trolley go over here and I'll just grab it. Ooh. I also started another project. Sarah Newman. Uh, I'll take it out so it doesn't crinkle, sorry. Sarah Newman, 1822. This gorgeous sampler. I loved it because of the oranges in it, like the peachy oranges. And that's by Fox and Rabbit Designs. It's a reproduction sampler. And um, I found, I've been waiting on the, the right fabric, which I got from... Um, Jay's Cross Stitch on Etsy. I'll put a link to all these down below. Um, and it's 36 count uh, lemon butter. And it's 26 inches by 36 inch piece of fabric. Uh, so that's Jay's Cross Stitch. And this is it here. Actually, where am I holding it? So it's quite a big piece of lemony yellow um, fabric. Where did I start? A very tiny, tiny, teeny weeny start. You can see how big this is going to be, quite big. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, it may not be use up the whole fabric actually, because I think I got a bigger piece than I needed maybe. I can't remember. I don't know. Anyway. So that's just part of the border I've started. Nothing too exciting, but it's a start nonetheless. So yeah, so that's it. That's all I've stitched on. Oh, I feel bad, but it's just so hard with a little puppy. She just wants to 
jump and chew on your feet and uh, bite your hands and play and steal all the things you don't want to steal and run off with them so yeah and this is in my lovely project bag from Daylene that I won on her podcast on her foss tube um isn't it cute look at that gingham love that thank you Daylene um so yeah that's all I've done cross stitch wise um since I saw you last I did do about a dozen stitches in white on my um, Lucy cow cut but it's not worth showing because it's white on white virtually I mean the fabrics very 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 pale pink which looks white <laughs> on the camera and um, and the the threads white so you can't hardly see it so it's not much of use showing you yet so I get further along so that's all I've worked on sorry I'm sorry if you come here for the um, lots of cross stitch and there's nothing to see um, but hopefully next time I'll have more for you so um, oh, I don't know what to do I don't know what to do okay I'm gonna show you half object in knitting and it won't take too long and then Part of that is showing you a new acquisition that I got um, that I bought like haul um, so I have wanted sock blockers for years since I first started stitching socks um, and I just never they weren't easily available in Australia anyway Lumographica which is the company where I got my um, corner gauge rulers made they have made their own um, sock blockers, which are all see-through and they've got holes to keep the airflow. And this is a uh, 10 inch, 254 millimeter, medium to large women, um, medium men um, sock blocker. So I've got a pair, the other one's out in the other room, but you only need to see this one. So I finished a sock for Wayne that I started in January and I'd gone all the way down to the point where I needed to in January I'd basically gone all the way down to where I need to do the heel flap and gusset and it just seemed at the time too much brain power was required so I put it on hold and then oh and my hands were hurting now they're not playing up as much because I don't know what the hand therapist did but she massaged my arms and must have got whatever pinched nerve out of the way so I've been able to knit and so I've knit the rest of the sock so I just did a classic heel flap and gusset um, and then I finished the toe with the contrast color in a generic I can't even remember where I got it from brown fawn colored yarn and I think I could have got it from um, spotlight that yarn and this one I got in Sydney um, from a yarn shop there and I think it's by Olan in Ireland it's um, I, I know some people hate pooling but I don't mind it I think it just gives some something different to the fabric um, and Wayne doesn't mind so these are for Wayne and um, I've, st I've cast on the other sock I did a bit of a pointy toe because I haven't done a knit socks for ages and I did a bit of a pointy toe which I don't like but it actually does fit really well so who's going to see it it's going to be in the shoe and Wayne wears his hand knit socks like over and over and over they get really well worn so um, he doesn't care he just likes having hand knit socks so rest is knit worthy um, so yeah so it's a bit of a pointy toe if I was doing them for me I'd probably the next time I would stop my decreases further just a little bit further up and then just do the kitchener stitch to shut it um, that went a bit too pointy for my liking but when it's on your foot you don't see the pointiness and it does fit really well so yeah so there's the sock blocker and really reasonably priced and super quick shipping and um, it comes with like a oh, 
what am I doing? I'm putting this on back to front. It comes with a covering on it, like a contact, but you just soak it in water and it peels off. It's just a protective thing on when they do the cutting. So yeah, so that's my half object, my hoe. Ho, ho, ho. Hopefully I'll have it finished for Christmas for Wayne. So he can put it in his Christmas stocking. Um, so yeah, so oh, I'll just show you. I do have a cross stitch acquisition coming up, but I'll show that in a minute. So, oh, and I got this gorgeous necklace, which I need to hang up in my bedroom from Wayne's mum and dad. Isn't that gorgeous? It's got little roses in the beads. It's really pretty. It's very pretty. So I look forward to wearing that. So that was another thing I got for my birthday. So yeah, so I've got this much yarn left. So plenty there. And I've done the cast on of the, um, I prefer doing cuff down. I think the um, cuff looks nicer. And um, see how there's a little jog happens if you're new to knitting. See how there's a little jog there because it's knitting's always when you're in the round, it's sort of like a spiral, so you're always going at an angle down. When I come to weaving in the ends, I just sort of nip that bit, that side over with this side, like a knit stitch, and it just makes it even so if you're wanting to make it even so that's all I've got done so far because what happened I lost a needle I don't know where it is it's fallen out so I need to find another needle and I don't have many metal I don't these are the basically the only I've got one other set of metal needles I'll see if I've got some wooden ones thin enough, but um, yeah, so annoying. These are three millimetre. Uh, so anyway, so I, I would have had heaps more. I would have probably nearly had them finished by now, but anyway. Uh, I just need to get some more, another, find another needle so I can finish that project. The only other thing I cast on was another snuggle down cow. Ooh. I had um, plenty of um, mohair left over from the other project, so um, which used two balls of the Indo Cheetah, and well, one and a quarter or half, and then I put the other half into this one. And the yarn, this yarn is this is going to be a knit. A gift my brain this is going to be a gift this is the yarn colorway that the grocery girls bought out a couple of years ago by cozy posy yarn co I think it was called candy cane so it's all brights and you can see the difference when you meld it with a bright color because the main color of this is this yarn and you see how subtle it goes when you mix it with the uh, mohair or the suri alpaca just softens everything down so um, that's the main color that's going to be between each of the um, decorative rows and then in the decorative rows I've got some a little bit of ice blue yarn that Laura gave me um, in vlogmas last year so I've just pinched a little bit of that to go in there and then um, this one's Edison bulb by um, Madeline Tosh that come from Denmark from Stephen West store um, and then this other one is Dingo Dye Works that I had um, a little bit of yarn from I think Laura might have given me that one as well no it was a different one that I had I think I can't remember anyway so there's that for those rows and then I'm started on a bit of this purple like mauve so that'll be really subtle and then I've got, oh, then I have, no, it's not there. Do 
Oh, there it is. Dingo Dye Works. So the other Dingo Dye Works, the green one that I just showed you here, is this one. And then the other Dingo Dye Works I'm going to add in is this hot pink over here. And then I'll finish off with another blue row at the end. So that's looking really, really good. It's gorgeously soft. And this is going to be a gift. But I'm not going to say for who. <laughs> In case they're watching. So, um, yeah, I got this cute little stitch marker. I got this as a gift when I did a bag swap. From Hedgy Knits. In the US. And it's a Sucra Sucra mini um placeholder and um it's a little hot chocolate with a candy cane in it yeah very cute she got that when she was at Rhinebeck oh. oh okay so that's all the projects all the um new starts etc now for my birthday I got myself a present as I hope many of you do we should all buy ourselves presents for our birthday so I got Anne Borat 1646 for thee and only thee I love by hands across the sea samplers and it is a gorgeous land sampler from the 1600s and it has three over three stitches for the cross stitch so it's a bit different and um, it has this really interesting, I don't know if there's a close-up. don't know. Hmm. I'm just seeing if there was a close-up, not really, of, um, I'll just show you that bit there. See that? That's some of the stitching on on it very confusing i don't know how i'm going to go with that one <laughs> but anyway it looks super pretty i mean honestly if i find i'm having trouble i think i could get away with just doing i don't know back stitch and satin stitch in between but it's for that part there yeah but anyway everything's um three threads three threads over three um, and I'm looking forward to doing that. It has no border, so you don't have to worry about it matching up. And it's just pretty flowers and, yeah, gorgeous. And Borat wrought this, 1646. So, yeah, I love it. And she gi always gives you a really good background on the girl or the times that the girl was living in at the, when she made it. And you get this um, thread card. And it also has um, a project info that you can put about your project and then attach that to the back of it when it's framed. So that's really good. So I got that. And I also got the um, called for Soir d'Alger um, silks, which I've never used before. Um, and I got this all from A Stitch in Time in Hobart. So if you're looking for a great LNS, Stitch in Time Hobart is excellent fabulous service and um, they always wrap it up in tissue paper so you really do feel like you're getting a gift so these are all the try and hold them these are all the lovely silks that I'll be using for this project I'll just drop that because that's a duplicate that's a duplicate okay that's an extra just so you can see all the colors so pretty yeah so pretty so anyway so i've got those so i haven't started that project yet i thought oh three over three i just looks like something that needs a bit of concentration to get st get into the rhythm of it because i know i'll probably halfway through start doing two over two it's one thread over three stitches what am i saying anyway you know what i mean i hope and then the other thing i got because it can't travel alone i couldn't afford it was, it's quite expensive to get that one but i did need um, roasted marshmallow for um halloween at hollyberry farm so i got that one 
of the um, Simply Shaker Gentle Art Threads. And yeah, so that's what I got myself for my birthday. It's my birthday, Lisa, it's your birthday. You really don't need to hear me sing that, do you? Um, <laughs> oh dear, what else? Can't think of anything else. I think that's it. So whatever you're stitching, happy stitching. And um, I'll talk to you again soon. And if it's not this month, um, it will definitely be Vlogmas. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to do daily vlogs because, quite frankly, I don't have kids and we don't go anywhere because it's COVID. So I don't know that it'll be that interesting. <laughs> but uh, except maybe on the weekends. So I might do a weekly or a weekend vlog each week um, leading up to Christmas. But we'll see what's happening. Um, other than that, have a great week and stay safe and take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.